The layout of your website directly determines how users perceive your content. Layout also affects the overall aesthetics of your website, probably more than any other factor. In this video, I want to discuss some guidelines you can use to make good decisions about the layout of your website. The three keys to a great layout are consistency, separation, and simplicity. These will come up a lot throughout this video. To provide some context, let's take a quick look at the history of page layout. We've been writing for more than 5,000 years. Since the birth of written language, people have been thinking about page layout. Ancient Mesopotamian cuneiform writing is arranged in a simple layout with regular rows of characters. A few thousand years later, writing had developed significantly. Handwritten illuminated manuscripts used basic grid patterns to help lay out text in a pleasing way. In 1439, when Johannes Gutenberg invented movable type in Europe, the written word became much more important in daily life. Over the next few hundred years, the number of books in the world skyrocketed. Interestingly, Gutenberg wasn't the first to invent a movable type printing press. A Chinese commoner, Bi Sheng, invented a similar device almost 400 years beforehand. Gutenberg based his layout on grids of manuscripts. And as a result, a great deal of books produced during this time happened to follow very similar layout patterns. It wasn't until the 1940s when Dutch bookmaker J. A. Van de Graaff first formally defined how to lay out books in a consistent way. The Van de Graaff Canon. Since then, there have been plenty of other canons of page construction. Rosarivo, Chaishold and Honecourt each have canons bearing their names. But they all produce similar, if not identical, layouts. These canons can help when laying out books, but you might be thinking that this is all completely unrelated to laying out a website. Well, remember the key to a great layout, consistency. The Van de Graaff canon made sure each page in a book had identical margins, cutters, and line length. Separation. The margins on each page were wide and left plenty of room around the text, especially on the bottom where people tended to hold the book. Simplicity. Bodies of text were not cluttered, aligned in strange ways, or broken into complex fragments. Shortly after Van de Graaff, in the 50s, the international typographical style, or Swiss style, became popular. This is when Helvetica was created, and it was used extensively. The Swiss style relied heavily on grids to lay out content, and a lot of the grid systems, like manuscript grids, column grids, and modular grids form the basis of modern layout techniques and frameworks today. Let's have a look at some examples of layout in modern web design. First, the website of designer Travis Nielsen from DevTips here on YouTube, travisnielsen.com. Consistency. The column alignment, width, and spacing is all consistent. Separation, space between all the elements on the page. Simplicity, there's just two main areas of focus, the aside and the main content, which is further broken down into consistent columns. Next, let's take designerinsights.com. Consistency, the column alignment, width and spacing is all consistent. Separation, plenty of white space. Simplicity. A simple grid layout with short headlines, blurbs and well-positioned images. Lastly, let's take a bad example from the one that just keeps on giving, archive.org. Consistency. None of these columns match. Separation. Everything on the page is crammed together. Simplicity. Each element is complex. There's three headings and lines of small text inside each little box. So how do you create a design that follows these rules? 
A lot of designers work directly in Photoshop or Illustrator, and these tools come with layout grids that help you align elements on a page consistently, which is great when working on a static design, but not as useful when building a responsive website. Designers of unresponsive content often use a column grid layout template, like this, to help align elements on the page. A website is a fundamentally different medium than print media, so it demands a different approach to layout. When your site can be displayed in many different sizes, your layout has to be dynamic. Enter the modern CSS grid framework. Bootstrap, Foundation, Skeleton, Neat, and a whole host of other options exist to help lay out a website. These frameworks typically provide a way to use predefined CSS to lay out your website. They also provide the three keys to a great layout, consistency, separation, and simplicity. For an in-depth look at using Bootstrap and Foundation, check out the Dev Tips playlist linked in the doobly-doo. Let's take Bootstrap as an example. Consistency. Like most frameworks, Bootstrap has a 12 column grid. That means you lay out your content in columns that always align to the same basic 12 divisions. Separation. Bootstrap adds padding, margins and gutters automatically. Bootstrap is mobile first, which means it's designed to represent your content on a small screen first and then scale up. This forces you to think about simplifying your layout. However, critics of Bootstrap and a large number of CSS grid frameworks claim that while the rendered page might look nice, clean and simple, the code behind it is chock full of div tags. While it's not quite as bad as the code produced by old what you see is what you get editors, it isn't as clean as it could be. It's important to remember that no technology is the be all and end all, or even best suited to every problem. Always keep your mind open to different or new technologies. They might just be better than what you already have. This is the second in a series of web design and development videos brought to you by me, Anthony Malik, and Review Your dot website five minute website video reviews if you want to see more episodes please subscribe like and share this video if there's a specific topic you'd like to see get in contact through email twitter or reddit and you'll find links to my references and more information in the doobly-doo thanks for watching